Well, in case you haven't figured it out from reading the top of the page, we're going to be considering the unit tangent vector. If you were to go back to what we've covered previously, you might even guess um, how to calculate this without necessarily knowing any significance. But if we re recall, we have what's called position. Position, the vector valued function. In our book, it's R of t, but it could come under other names. Think of R as sort of like a radius from the origin, and you kind of have the nickname in the Western world why they use this notation here, at least. And we have our velocity vector, which is the first derivative of position. v of t. And we also have what is called speed. Speed is the magnitude of the velocity vector. And just as a recollection, if we have a curve r of t, so the arrow indicates a direction, and I choose a particular point on the curve and draw its velocity vector. The length of this vector would represent what we would call speed if we're talking about uh, uh, just the movement in a direction. What we're interested in is the direction but without concern of the magnitude we would like to consider this as a unit vector capital T for tangent capital T for tangent so the unit tangent vector will have the capital T of T as its notation and well do I need to spell it out how do you make a unit vector out of a vector well that's right you take the vector in question and divide by its magnitude please recall that uh, even in our book they use the other notation for magnitude, the double bars, but in my own schooling many of my professors just reverted to the single or even the books only use the single because uh, sort of a distance is represented much like absolute value does. So it gets less messy when you're trying to read my writing if there's only one set of bars. So this is not difficult. So let's go through a couple calculations real fast. We'll do uh, three examples here. First example, r of t is 1 plus 2t, 4 minus 5t. Now, if we're only told to calculate the unit tangent vector, then all we would do is you know, calculate the velocity vector. Uh, first derivative is 2. First derivative is negative 5. And you might eventually notice that this is a function of t, but there's no variables here. So I'm just going to put a little footnote here. It's constant. it's always in the same direction. It doesn't vary over time. In this curve, we can see that the tangent vector is going to change. It's going to have variables if it changes. This doesn't change. And well, that's because this is linear. It goes right and down. I'm not going to quickly go over that, but I'm going to let you go back and review if necessary. So it has a constant velocity vector. And if you want to make that the unit vector, then you'd want to first calculate the magnitude. I 
I think you will find, whoops, we don't need that notation, I think you will find, but I think you will find that the speed is square root of 29. So therefore, the unit tangent vector is 2 divided by root 29, negative 5 over root 29, at every point on this graph. Every point on this graph. It kind of feels like something we've already done in this particular example. So, so what we're going to do is look at two curves to add to our collection of, of examples. And the first curve is going to be this one happens to be a standard parabola. We're going to calculate the unit tangent vector. So we need the velocity vector. And the velocity vector is 1 comma 2t. That would be the first derivative. The magnitude of this vector at time t is the square root, 1 squared is 1, 2t quantity squared is 4t squared, square root of that. So the unit tangent vector would be the velocity vector divided by its magnitude and that will be 1 divided by square root 1 plus 4t squared and 2t divided by square root 1 plus 4t squared. Now only in a math classroom would this be the end of the story. Calculate the tangent vector like I'm a math drone. No. You're going to be measuring something and measuring it many places and maybe calculating data and maybe graphing it. Generally speaking though, this will upgrade to needing technology very quickly. So we're at the fundamentals. Can you recognize the tool? Can you manipulate the tool? In the application process, you would get into the, you know, what is it used for a little bit more than I'm going to be able to in my little short segments. We could do a calculation though. Imagine we had the parabola. I'm going to draw an arrow on one side only because in this particular case it would go to the right and to the right only. If we wanted to calculate, for example, when t is 2, the actual unit tangent vector, the notation would be to calculate this at 2. It's a function substitute values into functions and let's see what we would get um, 2 squared is 4 16 1 over square root 17 comma 2 times 2 is 4 4 over square root 17 that would be the unit tangent vector at that point 1 more example. This one will be without a sketch. We're not going to go through and plot the points and graph. We're just going to make sure we're exercising a few little calculus muscles while we're going through the calculation. We're going to need the velocity vector and its speed to run through this calculation. The first derivative would be 1 half multiplied by t to the negative half power, negative 2e to the negative 2t, and that would be equivalent to 1 over 2 root t and negative 2 over e to the 2t. 
the magnitude of that vector. Let's see. If we square this, we would get 1 over, that's right, 4t plus, when you square this, you'll get 4 over e. Oh, now what is that going to be? Well, you could use the wrong exponent rule and accidentally get it correct. Um, when you raise an exponent to another power, you would multiply those exponents. That should be e to the 4t power. So e to the 4t power. And therefore, that means the unit tangent vector is almost not going to fit on my paper if I'm not careful here. Capital T, here, let's get this out of the way. Oh, this is going to be messy. 1 over 2 root t, negative 2 over e to the 2t, over 1 over 4t plus 4 over e to the 4t. Well, this is horrible. Square root 1 over 4t plus 4 over e to the 4t. Now, you might have all kinds of nightmarish thoughts related to what your algebra teacher would tell you. Oh, you have to rationalize the denominator. I don't emphasize that as much in this course because of the targets that we're headed towards, the types of skills that we're going to need to practice more. But fractions and fractions and more, uh, I mean, these are complex fractions. This is messy. I'm just going to put a little smiley face here to say simplifying this will be not as much fun. If we wanted to calculate the value at a particular number, this wouldn't be nearly as traumatic. For instance, if you wanted to calculate this unit tangent vector at time equals 4, it would be a little bit easier to simplify this. Well, probably a lot easier, but it still would not be fun for an elementary algebra student. I'm going to leave this as a question mark, something for you to have fun with. Until next time.